Hi, I'm Hazel, and today I want to show you the best way to effectively farm WoW mounts that drop from bosses. There are roughly 350-ish mounts available to collect on a single character in WoW, and about 10% of those drop from dungeon, raid, and world bosses. If you're going for a mount collecting achievement mount like the Albino Drake, the Dragonhawks, the Jade Pandaren Kite, the Fellfire Hawk, or the super rare Heavenly Azure Cloud Serpent, you're gonna want some mounts from bosses. On top of that, farming mounts from bosses is the most classic type of slot machine gameplay to be found in WoW. Kill the dude, probably get nothing. But when you finally get the thing, it's an amazing feeling that will have you chasing your next hit with vigor. It's addictive, but it's also time-gated, so you're probably less likely to ruin your life with mounts than you are with actual crack. Before you start, be prepared. Mount farming is open to everyone, but getting set up right will make it both easier and faster. Ideally, you want to use a level 110 character. You can still farm quite a few bosses at lower levels, but the lower you are, the more limited your options get. It's also best to have flying unlocked in all zones up to at least Pandaria, or Draenor if you're overachieving. Next, take a look at your specs and pick the one with the best movement speed and instant AoE. That might be very different from your best damage spec, so think about it. For example, even though I main a Shadow Priest, I run all my old raids as Holy. I keep Holy Nova and Holy Fire on close keybinds, and use this Angelic Feather macro to sprint myself along. Next, either cook up or buy a big stash of Bear Tartar. It gives you a 5 second, 70% sprint after every time you kill any mob or even critter, regardless of level. Eat that at the start of any old instance and then eat more when the buff expires. Now, it's time to look at what you're missing and plan your route. You could make a checklist of what you need and then pour over maps figuring out where to port to and what to run first. Don't do that. I have a much better plan. Open up your browser and go to simplearmory.com. Enter your realm and character name. At the top, select collectibles and then mounts to see a categorized list of which mounts you do and don't have. Then, and this is the best part, click this dope little checkbox that says Show Planner. Ta-da! Everything is figured out for you. It'll tell you where to set your hearth, what difficulty you need to set the raid to if it's required, when to port, and where to fly to. This is the fastest route for you to take for farming lockout-based bosses. As you add mounts to your collection, the planner will reflect that with an updated route. Now that you're ready to go wild on a mount farming spree, let me hit you with a few tips. There's a couple of add-ons that I use to streamline and enhance the old raid running experience. First, if you have any interest in collecting transmog while chasing mounts, you gotta get Manar's Wardrobe Helper. It supplies a checklist of which appearances you need from an instance and shows you what percentage of mog you've collected from every instance in the game. Second, if you're picking up loot to vendor, as you should, I recommend you set up Auto Vendor. Auto Vendor will automatically sell your gray gear and repair your items when you open the vendor window. It can also sell all soulbound items below a set item level, so all that boss loot gets auto-sold too. Finally, you can manually add items to the junk list by typing slash junk and then linking the item. I do that for low-level food, potions, and scrolls that drop so I can just pick up everything as I go and then auto-vendor all the trash out of my bags without sorting through it. Finally, I use Trade Skill Master to identify which pieces of BOE gear and crafting mats are worth selling, automatically mail all of them to my bank halt, and then automatically price and post them. Setting up Trade Skill Master is a bit of a time investment, but it pays off. I have a lovely little set of beginner guides linked in the info below to help you get started. Even if you don't play the auction house at all, you can still benefit from seeing market prices and tooltips, auto mailing, and auto pricing the things that you pick up. Keep in mind that if you're going for that next meta mount, the number that matters is the one tracked by the achievement, not the number in your mount journal. You need mounts usable by a single character, which is quite different from total mounts. Mount farming is a rewarding pastime in WoW that builds permanent value to your account and Azerothian experience. Once you've earned a mount, you have it forever across all characters. Seeing that epic drop in the loot table is a magical moment that you can chase again and again as you fill out an epic mount collection. Keep an eye out for more videos from me as I gather tips for collecting mounts from reps, vendors, achievements, and more. Thanks for watching! Let me know what you think. Please consider leaving a like if you liked it, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye!